All right, here we go. Let's do the second quest from the two-player starter kit, the Collector's Edition. I am going to be taking the Tactics Lore deck up against the second quest that was provided in that Collector's Edition. I'm excited for this. I have not played either the deck or the quest. I am going to make one change, though. I'm swapping out Glorfindel for the alternate art Glorfindel. This is the art you get at the uh, Gen Con event. All right, so what do we got? We got Glorfindel, he's a 12 threat, three willpower, three attack, one defense, noble, Noldor, warrior. Uh, he has five hit points. Action, pay one resource from his pool to heal one damage on any character, limit once per round. We have Biffer, one of the best splash heroes in the game. He's a dwarf. He has seven threat, two willpower, one attack, two defense, three hit points, and I can pay a resource from another hero's resource pool to add a resource to his resource pool. Limit once per round. And finally, the new hero, Tactics Thorin Stonehelm. He is nine threat. He has one willpower, three attack, one defense, and four hit points. Dwarf Noble Warrior response after Thorin Stonehelm is declared as an attacker. I can discard the top card of my deck and deal one damage to an enemy engaged with me. Very fun. So that puts my starting threat at 28. And let's begin the quest. So the first thing we do is we draw our hand of six. I've already shuffled this, but for the sake of clarity. There we go. Okay, Blade of Gondolin. A Zane Silverbeard. Elron, the Gladrium Minstrel, oh, Gildor's Council, and Lembus. Ah, uh, oh boy. So that'll let me find an event. This is this is an incredibly useless card in solo because it's a minimum of one. Nope, I don't like it. I don't like it because I don't really have an ally I can put out to help my willpower. I don't have an event that really helps me. Yeah, the minstrel could have found me an event, but um, I would like to see his axe. I would like to see a hero or an ally that stays in play and gives me some willpower. Um, maybe a faint would be nice. Gildor's Council is, is really garbage. I mean, the only thing it's good for is discarding to Daron's runes. All right, here we go. And we got... All right, the Minstrel came back. Elfstone, that's great. That'll help me get an ally in. Another Elfstone. Ooh, and look at the big ally I can put in. Haldir. And another big ally, a Zane. Much better. And this is basically like questing with a nice ally. It'll, re it'll remove the threat. So... Secret Paths is great. Gladrium Minstrel, two Elf Stones, Haldir of Lorien, and a Zane Silverbeard. All right, now we do the quest. Uh, this is the Caves of Nibindum and the Dark of Nibindum. You have pursued the goblins that attacked a woodman village to the mountains of Mirkwood. The trail leads over a steep ridge where you discover the forgotten dwarf home of Nibindum. You light a torch and enter in. Okay, we're going to pull three cards aside, the Chieftain, the Cracked Pillar, and the Cave Torch. And then we're going to attach Cave Torch to one of my heroes. It's restricted, I can exhaust it, and place three progress on a dark location. But when I do that, I have to, well actually, when the Cave Torch exhausts, so it's not even if I trigger the effect, it's if something makes me exhaust the Cave Torch, i got to discard the top card of the encounter deck. If it's an enemy, add it to the staging area. So an enemy saw the light from my torch and came and got me. I'm gonna put it on Biffer. I don't think I'll be using his restricted slots. Uh, I flip this over. The dwarves abandoned Nibbin Doom after an earthquake collapsed part of the mine, but it seems the goblins have since adopted it as their home. The flickering light of your torch reveals a network of dark passages and you set about searching for signs of the enemy. I'm gonna search the encounter deck for a location and add it to the staging area. 
Okay. All right, I decided to go with Goblin Dungeon. I got to reveal an encounter card to travel there, but then after it leaves play, I can search the top five cards of my deck for an ally and put it into play. So it's uh, three threat and five to clear, and it is not dark, so the Cave Torch cannot help me. All right, so let's start the game. Resource, 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 draw a card, Galadrium Archer. I think I'll play the Minstrel for two. Search the top five cards for an event. I got one event. It is pursuing the enemy. I can return a Sylvan ally to my hand and deal one damage to each enemy engaged with me. All right, let's quest. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're up against three. Uh, it's a treachery. It is crumbling ruin. Each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of his deck. Oh boy. If the printed cost of the discarded card is equal to or higher than the remaining hit points of the exhausted character, I gotta discard the character. Well, that's gonna be interesting. I got four hit points here. Oh man. All right, here we go. Two. Whew. All right. Lost my Envoy of Pelagir, but I didn't lose Thorin. I added zero threat. I quested for six. I placed three progress. I'm going to travel here. To do that, I reveal the top card of the deck. It's an enemy. And it also surges. It's the Goblin Runners. And that surges into a treachery. The player who controls Cave Torch must choose. Either exhaust Cave Torch or progress cannot be placed on the quest until the end of the phase. Okay, well, I'll choose the second option. I can't place progress until the end of the phase. So it's no problem. I'm in the travel phase. So now I have an enemy. Um, and he's definitely coming down. And I lost my defender. So that kind of sucks. He's attacking for three. I have no choice but to take it undefended. Uh, the shadow says attacking enemy gets plus one, plus three if it's a goblin, and that's, an, that's a loss. Okay, so restart. Alright, so I'm definitely calling that a loss. You can't lose a hero on turn one. You know, this deck, I gotta say, I'm not excited about it because there is no good defender on the table. Um, the closest is Biffer, because he has two defense. But, uh, you know, even if I had to take that attack, I was taking two damage on Thorin, no matter what. So, I don't like building decks where you don't have a defender on the table. All right, uh, Gandalf, Ancestral Knowledge, lets me place some progress. Uh, Lembus helps me heal. Elfstone to get an ally in. Sarnforn Sentry uh, draws a card for each enemy engaged with me. Uh, this one helps me quest Secret Paths. Yeah, I'll keep it just because I have Elfstone. And I'll probably get another ally in with that. Alright, so I already did all the setup. Card I draw Horn of Gondor. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be losing some characters. So, I am going to put Lembus on Thorin so he can hopefully defend if needed and then ready and attack. Uh, I'm going to put the Horn of Gondor on Glorfindel. Since I have so many um, lore cards. And we'll call it good. Alright, so let's quest. One, two, three, four. Four, five, I'm going to send everybody. Six, I'll send everybody because if I have to take an undefended attack, he should be able to ready and damage, or ready and heal. All right. And we reveal treachery. I got to either exhaust the cave torch or I can't place progress on the quest. 
I just won't place progress. So I quested for five. I'm sorry, I quested for six against three. I would have made three. No problem. Travel, I reveal the top card. It's a location. Uh, while it's in the staging area, it gains forced. After a goblin is revealed from the encounter deck, remove a progress token. Um, it is dark, so I could do the cave torch and risk an enemy coming out. Haven't seen an enemy yet. Uh, it's seven to beat it, so I'm really not gaining anything. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to build up my board state before I start taking some risks. 29 threat. We enter the resource phase. I draw a card. It's another secret paths. So that's nice. That's two threat. Um, okay, I'm going to hold on to Elfstone until I have an ally in hand that I want to actually get in. Um, it doesn't really make sense to play this because I don't have an enemy engaged with me. I can cancel some threat, so I think I'll probably do that. Or maybe I'll do um, Ancestral Knowledge. So I'm going to do a little trickery here. I'll quest for five. Uh, it is an enemy that surges. Oh boy. And that surges into an even bigger enemy. Alright, that's six. And I sent five. Alright, I am going to have an attack to worry about. Alright, I'm going to play both of these cards. I'm going to play Secret Paths and cancel two threats, so now I make one progress. And then, I'm going to exhaust a dwarf character to place four progress on an underground location, clearing this. Because it needed five. Once that is gone, I get to look at the top five cards of my deck and put an ally into play. Oh, a Zane. Nice. Yes, a Zane Silverbeard. Amazing. After he attacks and destroys an enemy, I spend a tactics resource to damage another enemy that shares the same trait with two. I damage it by two, which is awesome. I feel like I needed to play both of those because I was going to get location locked pretty quick. Alright, there's nothing uh, stopping me from traveling there. This is a 36 threat. Uh, 36 engagement, I'm at 29, this is 20. He is coming down. I wish he didn't attack for 3. That's a lot. I don't want to defend if a Zane, because if he gets boosted by 1, a Zane dies. I don't have anything in my hand to help me, so I think I'm going to take it undefended and hope. Okay, Shadow. Attacking enemy makes an additional attack immediately after this one. Not only does that card surge in the staging area, it surges as a shadow. Three damage goes there. I'm going to spend Lembus to ready and heal three. And now he's going to defend it. The additional attack shadow is deal one damage to defending character. Well, okay. It's one damage. A Zane attacks for three, which is enough to kill this guy. And he is a troll, and the guy I just killed was Goblin Orc, so I can't trigger his ability. But I did survive that round. Resource. Whoops, I should have raised my threat already. Resource. Resource. 30 threat! Okay, so here we go. We're at 30 threat. Start round three. I draw a Blade of Gondolin. So, plus one when attacking an orc, and then if that attack destroys an enemy, I get to place a progress. I got a while before this guy comes down. I mean, playing her right now, I don't get to draw any cards. That's kind of the whole point of her. Elfstone to getting Gandalf? No. Alright, I'm going to give this to Thorin. Thorin now has a weapon. Alright, we're just going to... I guess we're going to turtle. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. It's another location. Three threat. Um, it's the one that lets me find an ally. Goblin dungeon. So I underquested by one. I'll play this secret paths. And cancel three threat, so I overquested by two. 
Huh, okay, um, I think I will trigger the cave torch at this point, otherwise I'm going to get location locked. So I trigger the cave torch and place three progress here, discard the top card, it is an enemy, but the when revealed doesn't trigger, it's a really wimpy enemy. I'll engage it. Goblin Town scavengers are attacking for one. I'm going to defend with the Zane. Uh, the shadow says attacking enemy gets plus two. Jeez. The Zane takes a hit. I'm going to spend a resource off of Glorfindel to heal him. Alright, and then Thorin can definitely kill this guy easily. It only takes three to kill him. Um, technically, I, I attack for four thanks to the blade. The blade triggers and lets me place a progress on the current quest. And since locations act as buffers to the quest, it actually goes on that location. Alright, and we advance. 31. Resource, resource, resource. The card I draw is Haldir. Thank you. Okay, now I got an ally that I want to use Elfstone for. I'm going to spend one for Elfstone. I have to put two progress on here. Uh, that's better. I feel better about that. I'm thinking of playing Gandalf, to be honest, and drawing three cards. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play Gandalf with all my resources and draw three cards, because I'm running out of cards, which is crazy in a lore deck. Gandalf... Uh, return a Sylvan ally to damage uh, enemies engaged with me. That's pursuing the enemy. And the third card is exhaust a dwarf character to place two progress on the active location for progress if it's underground. Um, that's actually great. Okay, I'm going to plan on defending and attacking with these two characters. Well, let me think here. So I'm up against... I'm up against six, so I'm going to quest for one, two, three, four, seven, nine. Oh lord. Okay, so this is each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of my deck. If the printed cost of the discarded card is equal to or higher than remaining hit points, discard the character. All right. Well, I don't. There's no window here to heal him. Not that I could, anyway, but I gotta hope it's not a three-cost card. It's his axe, so one. Okay, he survives. Whew! Six! What'd I say? Nine? Three? Five? Nine. I make three progress. I gotta put two here. And one here. Okay. So I finally clear this seven quest point that I turned into an eight quest point location. Elfstone says, after attached location leaves play as explored location, the first player puts one ally from his hand into play. And I'll be putting Haldir of Lorien. He's a two, two, two range sentinel, which doesn't matter, but three hit points. He's just, he's a good ally to have on the table. Okay. To travel here, I gotta reveal the top card of the encounter deck, so I think I will. It's a branching path, so that's two threat. Okay, do I want to engage this guy? No, I don't. No, he's too big. Gandalf goes away. Okay, resource up. I'm at 32 threat. The card I draw is a Gladrium Minstrel. Nice. Okay, I'm actually glad to see that. I think I will play this Gladrium Minstrel. I get to search the top five of my deck for an event. Some allies. That would have been nice to... Oh boy. Am I going to whiff? Whew! They're on drones. Okay. Those allies would have been nice for when I clear this active location. Okay, Daron's runes. Draw two cards. Discard one. Um, I'm not going to play that right now because there really isn't a card I could draw that could help me at this moment. I don't have the resources to pay for it anyway. Okay, um, I'm up against five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is a four threat location, underground dark. 
and I got to exhaust the cave torch to travel there. Um, so it, it's actually five threat thanks to this. One, two, three, four, five, ten, and I sent eight. So I'm going to exhaust the cave torch and place three progress on a dark location. That's branching paths. That clears branching paths, but now two forced triggers happen. This says forced. After it leaves play, I look at the top three cards. I add one to the staging area, and I put the other two to the bottom of the deck. And then the cave torch also triggers. I'm going to choose to do the branching paths first. All right. So one of them is a branching paths. I'm not adding that. This one makes me raise my threat for each questing character I control, or discard a questing character, and this one is an enemy. But the Cave Torch could still add an enemy. I would have to raise my threat by four, or discard the Minstrel. It's also doomed one. This enemy actually doesn't come down, but it's adding threat. I don't really want to add threat. So I'm going to place these two cards on the bottom of the deck, and I'm going to reveal the treachery. So Doomed One puts me at 33. And then um, I'm going to discard the Minstrel. So she's not destroyed, so this does not trigger. She's just discarded. And then the Cave Torch effects triggers. Please don't be an enemy. It's not. Okay, good. All right. So now I'm up against seven, and I believe I sent eight. Nope, I didn't send eight. I sent seven. Because I lost a willpower. Okay, I'm going to trigger Biffer's ability and move the resource to him. I'm going to exhaust a dwarf character to place four progress on the active location because it's underground. And we advance the round. I'm at 34. Resource, resource, resource. And I draw another Horn of Gondor. So now I will play Daron's Runes. I'm going to be discarding Horn of Gondor. Faint and another Pursuing the Enemy. Faint cancels an attack. That's great. Pursuing the Enemy damages enemies. All right. Uh, I don't think I'm playing anything. I definitely am not. Let's quest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I get a two threat location. It says when a goblin is revealed, I discard a progress from the quest. So I sent eight. Oh, man, I'm up against nine. Nothing I could do. I sent everybody. I needed to make one progress. Okay, I'm going to get location locked if I don't do this. I got to engage this big guy. It says for each uh, point of excess combat damage dealt beyond the remaining hit points of the damaged character, I'll remove one progress. So I'm going to faint him. So that cancels the attack. So I don't need to worry about that. The shadow would have been... Uh, it would have just been nothing, because it would have been plus one attack for each goblin enemy engaged with me. Uh, unfortunately, I exhausted Thorin to quest, and he's only attacking for three, and his defense is four. I can't do anything. I can see myself losing because of this. Not being able to clear that location hurt, and I've already used tons of location management. Let's go. Resource, resource, resource. 35 threat. Draw a card. It's Elrond. Elrond lets me remove a condition, but it also gives me willpower. So, Sarnforn Sentry and Elrond both cost 3, and they both give me willpower. But I do have enough resources to pay for Gandalf. I have exactly 5. <clears throat> So if I did, if I played Gandalf for five and damaged him, he'd be two hit points away. And then Gandalf could also defend it. I'm still questing against six. So that would be six. I want to keep both of these guys up so they could kill it. 
I'll be questing against six, and I... God, I'm only questing for seven. I'm not really sure how this deck is supposed to work in solo. It feels like it's lacking in defense, and it's lacking in resource generation, and quest power. Um, of course, when this clears, I get an ally in play. I need to make one progress. And this is seven, so the cave torch doesn't help me, and that's not dark. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really have a choice. I'm gonna play Gandalf. I gotta kill this thing. Um, I gotta make progress, and I don't think I will. I mean, I'm gonna have to get very lucky. So I'm only questing for seven, and I'm already up against six. Yeah. Okay, this says, when revealed, discard the top card of each player's deck until the end of the phase. Goblin scavengers get plus X threat. Uh, it's two, so that's a three threat. It's nine, I underquested by two. Okay, my threat goes up to 37. I'm going to do engagements. All right, the troll's gonna attack Gandalf. Uh, another troll, but no shadow. Gandalf takes two damage. I'm gonna take this guy undefended. He's attacking for one. The shadow says, if it's undefended, discard an ally you control. That's okay. I mean, Gandalf was going away anyway. Uh, okay, I can now attack back for six, which is enough to kill this guy. So that's good. And then the Blade of Gondolin triggers. I place a progress, which clears this. So that's good. I get to search the top five cards in my deck for a ally. Another Minstrel. And some healing. Okay, I'll put in the Minstrel. Now I get to search the top five cards in my deck for an event when she enters play. Erebor Hammersmith. Uh, okay, I got two events. Daron's Runes and Kazad Kazad. To the end of the phase, a dwarf character gets plus three. Um, I'm going to do Daron's Runes and try to get some different cards in my hand. Uh, technically, when this goblin was revealed, because of this, I should have removed this progress. I think I'm going to exhaust the cave torch and place three progress here. And hopefully not get an enemy. It's not! Ooh, watchful eyes. Thank goodness. All right, good. All right, we advance. I'm up to 38. Okay, everybody readies. I'm at 38 threat. Resource, resource, resource. And I draw, okay, the Envoy of Pelagir. She's an ally that costs two. I can place a resource on a noble character. I'm gonna play Daron's Runes, Elfstone, and Kazad Kazad. I'm gonna get rid of one of these pursuing the enemies. Um, I'll play the Envoy of Pelagir and place the resource on Glorfindel, because he's noble. Okay, we're good to go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Goblin Sniper. So I can only engage him if there's no other enemies up here. So it's two threat, so it's four, eight. Okay, I make a progress. It's great. Um, to travel here, I need to exhaust the Cave Torch. So I'm just going to exhaust the Cave Torch and place progress. Because it's dark. And clear it. Because... Why exhaust the cave torch to travel there? So I'm doing this all at the after in the action window at the end of the quest phase. And the card is not an enemy, so cave torch doesn't hurt me. Traveling here, seven progress. I'm gonna engage this guy. Alright, I'm going to play Pursuing the Enemy, which says return a Sylvan ally to deal a damage to each enemy engaged with you. 
So they're both one away from death. Uh, they each get a shadow. Okay, he's attacking for two. Thorin is going to exhaust to defend it. Uh, the shadow says, raise your threat by one for each point of damage dealt by this attack. So that's one. One damage. And then he's attacking for one. I'll take it undefended. Because I want to kill one of these guys. It's another shadow. If this shadow destroys a character, return the enemy to the staging area. It doesn't. One damage. I'll put on Biffer. All right. Uh, a Zane will attack for three. And kill this one. I don't have the tactics resource to kill him. Had I known exactly what was going to happen, I would have put the resource on a Zane instead of Glorfindel. That's alright. Alright, unfortunately we are at 40 threat and we only have so far placed one progress on this quest stage. This deck is by no means a fast deck. And I've played two Gandalfs already. Alright, long defeat. So I can draw cards or heal damage. I'm going to play the Sarnforn Sentry for three. When she enters play, she's going to draw me one card, thanks to being engaged with the Goblin Sniper. It's, it's his axe. Perfect. Okay, I'll give him his axe. He gets plus one attack, and then after, after the attack, I get to deal an additional damage to the enemy, which is pretty good. And then I'm going to hold on to my other resources. All right, let's do some questing. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's another goblin sniper. So I make eight progress. That clears this and places a progress. I'll engage the goblin sniper. They're each attacking for two. I'm going to spend one off of Glorfindel to heal here. I'm going to take this undefended. No shadow. I'm going to take this one undefended. That's what I mean. I have a deck that I, ha I can't even defend with here. Um, shadow, raise your threat by one for each point of damage. So i got to raise my threat by two. I'm going to threat out. I'm at 42. All right. And then I can attack here with a Zane. He has plenty of attack to kill this guy. The blade places a progress. I'm sorry. I can attack with Thorin. And Zane attacks and kills this guy. But I'm at 43 threat. And I'm pretty sure there's no other threat reduction in this deck. Card I draw is Legolas. Alright, I'll play Long Defeat. Alright, let's quest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Last card, so it is going to reshuffle. It is a warg. So I make eight progress. That's enough to clear this. Long Defeat says I can heal five damage among characters or draw two cards. I'm going to heal. Like this. There we go. Okay, we advance the quest stage. As you search about the caves of Nibbin Doom, you are ambushed by goblins. Add the chieftain to the staging area. And then I also need to add another enemy. Okay, I'm going to grab one of those wimpy dudes. There we go, that one. Okay, um, the goblins are led by a large chieftain who whips them into a frenzy. His soldiers attack you with reckless savagery, and you struggle to gain the upper hand. During the encounter phase, treat each enemy's engagement cost as if it were zero. So I have three enemies coming down. That's great. And then four quest points for each enemy in play. So it's a 12 quest point thing. It's not great. I'm about to get attacked a lot. I'll take the one undefended, the shadow, because there is one. If it's undefended, discard an ally. Wow. Just hurts. All right. Um, he's attacking for two because he's a bunch of X's. X's is the number of the quest. 
He can't take damage and can't have attachments. And after he attacks, I either got to remove progress or return it to the staging area. I got to kill things. So his two attack is also undefended. I've never taken so many undefended attacks in my life. So plus one for each goblin. So he's attacking for four. All right. I guess the Zane is going to defend. No shadow. Okay. The Zane takes two damage. Oh, one damage. Sorry. Okay, Thorn can attack for one, two, three, four, and then five if it's an orc, but I can't attack him. He actually goes back up to the staging area. So, one, two, three, four. So these two kind of work against each other. Because if the axe kills it, then the blade doesn't trigger. It really doesn't matter. Alright, I'm just going to kill this one. Uh, the extra point of damage from the axe is enough. I don't get to place a progress because the blade says after the character attacks and destroys, and technically the axe destroyed. Okay, eight quest points. I'm at... whoa. 44. Resource, resource, resource. And I draw... Gildor's Council, completely useless card. All right, um, so I definitely need to spend a resource and do some healing. So I will heal here, and then, yeah, we. I mean, the only way we're gonna win is by powering through with questing. So I'll play the Minstrel. Two, I get to pull an event. All right, quick strike. That's going to be helpful. Quick strike lets me declare um, one of my heroes as an attacker, or maybe it's character as an attacker. Hold on, I can't see. Uh, character. Okay, that'll come in handy. All right, cool. Let's quest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten against two. Ah. <sighs> It's an enemy. Okay, that's okay. Wait a minute. That might that might be okay. That is six progress. Now hold on. We might be able to get through this. Six progress. Quick strike is not a combat action. I can do this right now. Exhaust a character you control, immediately declare it as an attacker, and resolve its attack against an eligible enemy target. So I am going to exhaust, <laughs> I'm going to pay one for quick strike, exhaust a Zane, he kills this goblin orc, and then I can spend a tactics resource to deal two damage to another enemy with a trait that's the same. So I will do that, deal two damage to the sniper, and kill it, ha! And then I only needed four to beat this, and I had six, I advance. Take that, son of a gun. Now even if I lose, I feel like I did something cool. All right, the chasm. The goblins retreat down a dark tunnel. You chase them into a large hall of many pillars. A wide chasm runs the width of the hall, and the goblins race across it on a large plank. Their chieftain casts the plank into the depths of the chasm and disappears, leaving you stranded on the other side. Put the chieftain out of play and put the cracked pillar into play. As you search for a way across, you see one tall pillar near the edge of the chasm has cracked where it meets the ceiling. If you topple the pillar, it could serve to bridge the gap. Reveal an additional card during the quest phase, and then progress can't be placed on the cracked pillar while it's in the staging area. After cracked pillar leaves play as an explored location, we advance. So that's pretty cool. I gotta, I gotta destroy this and make it collapse across the chasm. While cracked pillar's in the staging area, it gains the first player may declare an attack against Cracked Pillar during the combat phase as if it was an enemy. Um, it's going to have two defense, and I need to remove four damage to travel there. So I need to basically attack for six. I need to attack for six. So I'm going to use Kazad Kazad on Thorin and attack for seven. And so I'm going to place five progress here. 
or five progress, five damage there. Okay, we advance. Kazad Kazad boosted his attack by three, that's what I needed. I'm at 45. It's gonna be close, guys. Resource, resource, resource. Yorith going right into play. She's free. Spend one lore resource to exhaust Yorith, then heal three points of damage. I am doing that right now. Spending one and healing. All right. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, everything else I can't play. All right, let's quest. One, two, three. I, got, I don't have to make any progress. I just... I have to travel there, and I have to reveal additional cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay, the first card, uh, Doomed One. That's not good. And then this is the Raise My Threat or Discard a Questing Character. So I will discard a Questing Character. Not great. Second quest card, or the second card is a Four Threat Location. Uh, I quested for more than four. I actually I have six. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I make one progress. I remove four to travel here. Um, I will exhaust the cave torch to put three progress here. Don't be an enemy. Don't be an enemy. It's not an enemy. And we advance. Forty-seven. Kazad, Kazad. I need something to... I need something to reduce my threat. Alright, I'm gonna play Elfstone, because it's not immune. So I'll pay it. Um, nothing really to play. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I gotta do two cards. That sucks. First card is Goblin Sniper. Next card is this Treachery. I, I can either exhaust the Cave Torch or progress can't be placed on the quest. Progress still can be placed on the active location. All right, I will choose don't place progress on the quest since I only have to place progress on the active location. Nine against six is three, which is exactly what I needed because Elfstone added one. So I clear that. I get to place an ally in play. I will choose Legolas. I advance. You've made it across the chasm and resumed the chase. The goblins rally around their chieftain outside the dungeons where the woodman villagers are being held. You must defeat the big goblin if you are to fulfill your oath and rescue the captives. Add the goblin chieftain. He's now a four, 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 millions of fours. All right, here we go, oath keepers. While there is at least eight progress tokens on the stage, Goblin Chieftain loses the text, cannot take damage. I gotta defeat the Goblin Chieftain to win. Okay. So remember, the Goblin Chieftain, he's kind of tricky because he... Um, he You either have to remove progress or he goes back up to the staging area. Um, exhaust the Cave Torch to travel here. Well, I'll just exhaust it to place the progress and clear it. Don't be an enemy, don't be an enemy, it's not an enemy. Okay. I can't engage this guy, the chieftain comes down. He's 48 threat, says he can't be engaged optionally while there's another enemy in play. Okay, the chieftain is attacking for four. I can't damage him. So, who's defending? This is where I don't understand how this deck works. I I can't even defend a four attack at this stage in the game. I mean, if you don't have feints, I don't know how you're supposed to defend with this deck. I guess uh, Zane, unfortunately. Shadow. Psst. Additional attack. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, at least I get a resource from the Horn of Gondor. Well, she can't attack, or she can't defend. I guess uh, Thorin's going to defend. 
Shadow. Deal one damage to the defending character. And that kills him. Because he only could take an uh, attack of four with three damage. Okay, so I lost a hero. Another resource. My threat goes up to 48. He goes back to the staging area. Everybody readies. I can no longer play tactics cards. Elrond. Okay, I'm at 48 threat. Uh, my cards are pretty much garbage. I will play Elrond. And I will choose to draw a card. The card I draw is Lembus. That's good. Could have used that last turn. So I will pay Lembus. Okay, um, I'm going to leave her up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's not going to be enough. Uh, this one, I discard the top card of my deck and add that much threat. It's 2, 3, 7, 9. I quested for 10. I make 1 progress. So I will not be able to damage the Chieftain this turn, which means my threat will be at 49. I don't know how I'm going to muster up 12 attack, which is what I need to kill him anyway, in addition to making 12 progress on the quest. So I lost, so I might as well stop the game here. I do not like this deck at all. I really don't. I don't understand it. I don't understand how you're supposed to defend anything. There's not enough trickery, like, okay, there's two Defender of Ramases, but, I mean, they're good, but, you know, there's deal one damage to defending character type stuff, so that's no good. Um, quick Strike doesn't help because some of these enemies are too big to kill at once. Yeah, so what? You got two feints. Nope, not a fan. Um, and there's not enough card draw. I mean, it's lore. There should be Mithrandir's advice. There should be deep knowledge. Um... There should be Secret Vigil or something to help you reduce your threat, so you're just not counting on two Gandalfs, you know, paying five resources to drop your threat by five. I think you could see how slow this deck was, and even when it was running, it was still not doing much. I was barely questing for ten, and then I had no defenders, and no real attack. I tell you what, th this is not, this is a non-bow. These two weapons do not work well together. If you use the axe's ability to kill something, you can't trigger this. Because it's not the hero doing the killing. And then, the only resource acceleration is the Horn of Gondor, but it's restricted. And I wanted to play it on, Th on Thorin. But then I take up one of his restricted slots. Anyway, uh, I like the quest. The quest is pretty cool. I like pushing over that pillar. Um, I like that the chieftain comes in and out, and the enemies are just tough enough, but... Um, I don't think this deck is very good by itself. It might work in a multiplayer game, but um, I would never play this deck solo. I don't, I don't think it would have beat the first quest, to be honest. I think the uh, Leadership Spirit deck would probably beat this quest. Uh, anyway, it was a fun game. Losses happen. I threaded out. But I did enjoy the quest. I think the quest is pretty fun. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a great day. Look for our latest episodes and all the other social medias where you can find Cardboard of the Rings. Bye-bye.